Well, CBS News contributing meteorologist Jeff Birodelli joins me now on set. And what are the conditions looking like now? We've been watching this and it, it's yeah. just so hard to sort of like, you know, stay along with it because at one point you're watching the forecast and the winds are not yeah. working in the favor. So what's the latest now? Yeah, that's the big problem. It's the winds. I mean, overnight in central California, winds were gusting 30 to around 60 miles an hour or so. We get these these winds that come from the east. They come from the mountains. And when they go down the mountain, just like an accelerating ball, if you were to drop a ball on top of the mountain. Uh, the winds accelerate as they come down into the canyons and the valleys, and you see those wind gusts that are tropical storm force wind gusts. Uh, the good news in central California is actually the wind gusts will be coming down later today, so that's some good news. However, southern California, things are getting more complicated. The wind gusts are actually going to be increasing. In fact, we think we could see some hurricane force wind gusts no. in southern California. High wind warning. In fact, most folks will see 40 to 60 mile an hour wind gusts. But it wouldn't be out of the question to have a 70-plus mile an hour wind gust in Southern California today. And we don't think the winds are going to come down through Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, things will start to get better. It, you, so you combine the wind with low relative humidity, very dry ground, and it's a recipe for disaster. It's very hard for these firefighters to track and fight these fires. Yeah, with hurricane uh, force winds there, shouldn't yeah. fire season be ending by now? What? <laughs> causing it to sort of prolong and stick around. It should be because in October we tend to start to see a little bit of rain, not much rain, but a little rain uh, in Central California. So uh, in Sacramento, for instance, by now we should have around one and a half to two inches of rain so far for the fall. But we've seen basically zero across most of California. We've seen little or no rain at all. Now that makes it worse, especially at the end of fire season, because by the end of fire season, everything's already a tinderbox. So you need the rain to start on time when wet season begins to transition. Well, we're about a month or so, if not more, behind getting any rainfall. And so at the end of season, with a lack of rain, it makes conditions that much worse. And so what we're seeing here is once someone lights a fire by mistake or however it happens, it spreads really fast because the ground is so dry and the winds are so strong. And I know you've gotten this question a trillion times uh, in your career, especially with paying attention to this story right here. Uh, how much of a role has climate change played? Well, it's a big role. So to everyday people, you know, the changes may seem subtle, but the impacts are significant and substantial. Um, so a couple of things are happening here. As you can see by looking at this graph, uh, air temperatures have risen and the number of large fires have tripled since the 1970s. Uh, four of the biggest five fires in California history have happened in the past six years. And the fire season now is around three to four months longer than it was back in the 1970s. It's basically almost all year round. It's because temperatures are warmer. That increases the evaporation, so the ground gets drier. Also, the rain is less predictable. We see more extremes in climate change. So we have perhaps wetter periods, but a lot more dry periods and a longer time span where you don't have that rainfall. Combine that with more evaporation, warmer temperatures, and the important part, less snowpack. There's a lot less mm. snowpack in the uh, western part of the United States. Uh, because of that, it melts faster. And if it melts faster, there's less rain available or less water available, if you will, during the summertime and into the fall. That increases the length of fire season. So it's a lot of ingredients coming together. We can't ignore the human impact. The human impact is not the climate change impact necessarily. Of course, climate change is caused by the emissions of greenhouse gases in the environment. But what I'm talking about when I talk about the human impact is humans are encroaching on rural areas where they might not have been before. So with more people living closer to trees and forests, it does spark up more fires. But climate change is a, is a huge impact. Again, uh, to the everyday person, it appears like it's a very subtle change, if, if any change at all. But the impacts are substantial. Wow. Any relief in sight? Any substantial amount of rain headed our way? Uh, unfortunately, not over the next 10 days or so. There's really little if no rain in the forecast over the next 10 days. It's going to make it really tough to fight these fires. Beyond 10 days, maybe 12, 13 days, there's a chance, fingers are crossed, that a storm may move into California. But again, our predictability is, is not very good once you get past around 10 days or so. So it's up in the air, but at least over the next week and a half, unfortunately, they're not going to get much help. Let's hope so. They need some relief there, Jeff Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Always good to see you. You're